this is this is very cool. I uh, I, I posted it on on social media a couple minutes ago. It's funny. You're one of the few filmmakers who have seen me do a Q and A when I wasn't doing the Q and A with you. You were in the audience, and we're right. nice to, to lie and say I did a good job. So you know, always appreciate that. <laughs> good job. How have you been? Hanging in there. I uh, relive some shit by watching your new movie. So you know, oh, that yeah. was <clears throat> wow. that was definitely a uh, an interesting time capsule. How are you? You know, <clears throat> I think people don't realize just how much you produce because the movies sometimes take a, you know, a little bit of time to come out in between. But, yeah. you know, books, plays, you successfully produced an Oscar nominated child. Like, you know, when it comes to producing, <laughs> you put out a lot of stuff. Wow. What do you, what, when it comes to the films, though, like what, what makes something worth pursuing? Because it is ultimately the hardest of the things to put out. Uh, that's such a great question. Um, I, I I've, I've kind of distilled it down to two things for me. Will I be changed irrevocably for attempting to tell this story? Mm -hmm. And do I do I have some sense that the story could be useful? Yeah for someone makes sense uh, that's kind of the criteria and um and you know th th this same storm of course was born out of a moment when it seemed like it was going to be impossible to make anything for for who knew how long and and so so it, it had its own particular uh kind of journey that you know, I would say now that my, my um, sons are grown up and uh, launched into the world, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really just chasing or trying to be open to stories that, um, that really hit those two criteria. The third one was, will will I be able to feed my family? You yeah, know? Um, I'm not asking that as much. No. You have a backup plan now. You could just have them feed you if necessary. Well, I don't think they would like that, but oh. sure. Sure. No, you're, yeah, you find, they, they find out that's the reason you allowed them to pursue their dreams. Like, well, you know, just cut dad a check every once in a while. We're good. Uh, yeah, no, um, you're not going to be living off them. No. At least that. No, I mean, cast, perhaps. That's another story. But, you know, it's it's interesting when you, when you watch one of your films, because I think there's a there's an earnestness to whatever you're telling that really fits oddly the material. Like I remember back when the odd life of Timothy green came out, people being kind of like not confused, but it wasn't what they were expecting because it was so like pure of heart while still being yeah. not strictly a kid's movie, you know, like, like Ben is back is very much the anger a parent would have over the situation, but told in a, you know, a narratively interesting way. I, I'll maintain that Julia Roberts monologue at the food court is is an all timer. Just like what mm -hmm. parent wouldn't want to get that chance to make. By the way, sure, I painfully. There's something to your work that I think it it lingers no matter no matter what someone thinks on on the first view. And I'm very curious how how this is going to play because it is so very much tapping into. I think no matter how you felt during that time period, one of these stories is going to be how you felt because. If you had family, your first priority was like, are your is your family okay? If you were trying to make money, it was how can I make money? If you were bored, it was how can I keep interested? Everything is sort of reflected here. It's it's really fascinating to watch. Well, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm I uh, it's one of the thrills has been um, I've been able to see it now at three festivals. Yeah. Saw it we premiered at Tell You Ride, and then last year we were in Austin and Philadelphia. And we'll be in the Hamptons in a few days, and then we open in New York and L.A. But um, when I we made the film, I never imagined it would live theatrically. Yeah, I didn't know if we'd ever be in seeing movies again theatrically. But but uh, to get to experience the film collectively yeah. has been really a wonderful surprise. Um, the you know to, to share with in laughter yeah. and to to feel it land in a way that um and i'm not saying it's you know look there's so many amazing movies this year i know you've been to the festivals i went to tell you right as a fan this year so i saw a bunch of films 
think there's so many films to be excited about, right? So I'm, but, but I think, I, I think one of the things I was met with by people who saw the film, they'd say, well, when I heard about this film, I didn't want to see it. Yeah. But when I saw it, I was so glad I did. And I think it, 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 it's surprising in that I think it's cathartic and it, it, it is hopeful. It's painful in spots because you can't tell about this time truthfully and not, not pull no. some of some real ache. Um, at the same time, I do think, I do think that the, you know, what kept us from being in contact um, kind of helped and certainly in my life helped distill what really mattered and what was really worth fighting for. And um, this structure, this multi-protagonist structure, which is something I'd never really written in any way like this, opened up a whole uh, set of story possibilities and character arcs that really gave me a chance and the, the actors, you know, to kind of swing big and 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 you know no one story had to carry everything and no one story had to be everything and so it really was ultimately um rather liberating all the limitations all the restrictions um everything that got in the way actually became a, a, you know a, a, an instrument or a or a became one once they kind of accept it, embrace it and go with it, it 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 made for something very surprising. I mean maybe yeah. even maybe even on the on the writing side, because you're, you know, I imagine writing it during that time period going, I may never see these people again. I'm gonna write the biggest cast I've ever written. Oh because there was no question. Yeah. No question. And in some cases, uh, for instance, um I I would think I I want to. I'm going to try to earn the privilege of working with this actor. Yeah, because I'm going to. We're going to be asking them to do their own camera, to hang the props that we, you know, we sanitize and ship to them. Which, um, which actually makes the opening scene so nice of showing that, like breaking that wall. I think in a lesser movie it wouldn't work, which is why I think so many of the the quote unquote like COVID movies. Oh, we're shot you know, everyone looking at a screen or we shot this way or that way don't work because they just remind you of the wrong things. And you go like, this didn't need to be that. Just tell your story. These all are stories that are, that sort of need to be that and showing them that these are all just like human beings, you know, Sandro and John Gallagher, all these people are just like, yeah, I'm stuck at home too. And I'm dealing with my own crap. Like, yeah, I want to make a movie. Like, give me the set. I'll, I'll do everything. What do you want me to handle? I got it. No, it, it, it really is. I mean, there there's so many times I'm watching the film and I have to kind of pinch myself or kind of go, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, tears are rolling down his face. Yeah. He's holding his own camera. <laughs> you know, this doesn't make sense. But but I think I think also like deciding to, you know, tell the story through the devices we were using to communicate yeah. really helped um, because it it. It, it wasn't, we weren't trying to make a traditional movie in an untraditional way. We were making an untraditional movie in an untraditional way. I liken it to, in my kind of, not um, kind of, how do I want to say, the, the days when I was a little, not cocky, but a little kind of. Yeah, I can do this. What are you talking about? I got this. I'll figure okay. it out. Oh, no, you know what? It's like we're making a movie about the Titanic on the yeah. Titanic while the Titanic is sinking. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah, what 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 can be terrible? But what the other thing that really liberated Joey for me was, um, like so many people, you know, plagued and sometimes reduced by this idea of something perfect, making yeah. something perfect. Well, perfect was so out the window, and there's incredible liberation when perfect's out the window because something better comes along, and that is particularly when you have actors like these who just were so, by the time we filmed, I started writing at the end of April, we were filming in September. Most of them came aboard, you know, sometime between the end of July and during August. But when we were filming, they were, it'd been six months, five, six months since they'd been able to work in a meaningful way. Yeah. They were, it's a terrible metaphor, but they were like racehorses, you know, who'd been, 
you know, just the, like the way you just had to kind of open the gate and say, here are the parameters, go. And they they just were to a person. I mean, I could tell you story after story because there were so many technical challenges and so many yeah. things that had to be overcome that nobody needs to hear about, except that these actors are so fierce. I, I never, and I've never said this, but I'll say this for the first time and maybe the only time. I don't think I've ever made a film that's worthy of the actors who've been in it. Yeah. I don't think I've ever gotten there. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I, I think this is probably more true than ever. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean that I don't think the films are worthy. Um, but, um, you know, I, a lot of what drives me and from the beginning, from when I was first writing plays, uh, you know, and off off Broadway and producing them myself with friends from college, which included Mary Louise Parker and Kay yeah. Todd Freeman. And, you know, we, we would put up these crazy shows that no one would, you know, 10 people would come see. Yeah. But even then, when I was writing for actors and trying to be worthy of their trust and their willingness to come play, um, I wrote, I always got to a higher level than I could get to on my own. And that happened in the same storm too, when people like Sandra O oh and Elaine May of all yeah. people, you know, and I mean, down the line- Only took a pandemic to get her. When they all said, yes, they would do this. Yeah. You know, e even if the scenes I thought were pretty good, I would try to kick them to another level just right. because, you know, when you're-, when you're I, I have a friend who once played pickup basketball with Magic Johnson, right? And, and lost. And he said, it's crazy. He knows exactly where to throw you the ball yeah. for two, so you can make the best shot. Like he just knew like instinctively, like, and he said, I, I suddenly was a really good player. Yeah. But, and, and that's how I feel as a writer. Like I become just such a better writer when I'm in the presence of actors like these, yeah. just by the mere, you know, just being in the neighborhood. Oh yeah. I oh, know. Listen, I would, I would go to the mat for Ben is back as maybe being worthy of, of your cast, but we can, we can argue about that another time. Um, there's something about watching them, like you said, just sort of like racehorses who want to want to run. When I was interviewing people during and sort of as people were first going back to work, you know, everyone would want to tell a story. I think it might have been like John Magaro. Like we had to go finish the Sopranos movie. And like, you know, we all get there on the first day and like, do we remember how to do this? Like, I haven't stood in front of a person like we're wearing a mat, like, but I haven't stood in front of a person I'm not like intimate with in a long time and now i gotta pretend to be someone else there's so there's something about watching your cast very sort of seamlessly do it while clearly working out their own things because the characters are open enough for that but also then like we were saying before just you know working about the camera like setting up the room like I, mary louise park going i don't know does this look a little janky to you just like like something that like would never occur to her to do on most film sets but here she's like i don't know maybe i want this one instead like is in it just is in it because this is not everything that I've been doing for the last five months. And I'm going to give this my all, maybe even more so than, you know, I would if this wasn't the case. And we were just on a set making an ensemble drama. It's so true. You know, when she accepted the role, uh, about 20 minutes after she said yes, I started getting photographs uh, <laughs> of costume ideas. She'd already started designing her costume. She's like, you've given me something to do. This is very important right now. And and I and I was like, this is insane. Yeah. I mean, but it was that kind of commitment, you know, down the line. I mean, Raul Castillo, and I, he must have spent days emptying his closet to turn it into a hospital closet. Yeah. And Sandra O oh was staying at her sister's house in Vancouver and completely moved all of her stuff around so it was a pro i mean hours and hours doing this and this is they, they all did it and they did it and no one i mean you wouldn't know if you saw the movie but i can tell you to a person their their efforts were herculean and and then you know not only did they put that effort forward and then then they brought their a game when it came to the to their acting so, so everyone's everyone's also thinking about like oh if slash when we get back to the movies, when we get back to going on sets, everyone's thinking about it. Everyone was thinking about what was the last movie they went to go see in a movie theater? Will that be the last one? And, right. you know, my, mine wasn't the best movie in the world. So I was like, I really do hope I get back because, you know, that yes. that that 
crummy superhero movie may, may not be the way to go out. You Maybe know, everyone, that wasn't how I wanted to finish. Yeah, because everyone had that moment. I mean, I'm I'm in New York, as you know, like we all had that moment of like, I don't know, should we still be going out? Probably like this will be the last time we're not going out after this. Like my birthday was the day before lockdown. So I really was the last one. Wow. It was March 13th that Friday. And by the end of the weekend, that was when they're like, schools are closed. Please don't leave your house. Um, the mm -hmm. world is ending. No, it's, it's true. It's a really, it's been, it's been so interesting to ease back into the world and oh, yeah. still feel kind of half in it, you know. Occasionally things like the, the, the opening night festival, uh, New York Film Festival party was, was last weekend. And that was more crowded than most things I've been to in a while. I like, that was good. I know that like, we're all probably like vax boosted, like pretty safe. Some people still had their masks on. Like, I felt like I wasn't in danger, but there was that thing of like, too many people here like i'm not used to this many people anymore i'm i know i've become an indoor cat like this is uh, this I is a lot i want to be with my my my, my team exactly know? there's there's well that was the thing like you first you know the i already worked from home so it wasn't like super different to be like all right i don't put pants on i never did it's great but, <laughs> you know anytime you look at the news you're like oh no i don't want to do that which which i actually think is part of what makes the movie so good is it doesn't linger on any one feeling but it right. kind of hits that like you know no matter what day you were having something would pop up to remind you that like oh life is good but also by the way the world is kind of crumbling at the moment so you're it was just which which way you were leaning in any given day and, and depending on the person sometimes you lean too far in one direction and and i like that the movie doesn't do the like okay we're gonna go up 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 now down 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 up it's 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 like whatever we need to be at the moment. And, and sometimes the same character pops up in different feelings. And I thought that was really interesting because it would be so easy to make the, the dour version of this or the happy-go-lucky version that forgets about all that. And, and both would ring hollow, I think, especially now when you probably don't want to just think about the bad and you're still well enough aware that it wasn't good. Like, you can't pretend it was a fun time. Right. No, that, that look, that was, that was the hope. I think one other part that because of this notion that pretty much of the 24 main characters, I think about 18 of them, 17 of them get, get you know, two situations yeah. in, or, or, or let's say 13 or 14 of them. I, I don't know how many do, but many of them do. A little more than half, I think. So, yeah. so this idea that you get to see, I mean, I see it in myself. I'm, I'm, I'm different in this interview with you than I was with my dogs 10 minutes before the right. interview than I was with my wife earlier at lunch. And, and then I was with my therapist earlier yeah. today, you know, like you have all of this contact, you may still be in the same home, you may be yeah. in the same space, but you're different people. And, um, and, and, and so kind of the, the unknowability of people, yeah. um, or just that you know some, or you know people differently. Everyone knows someone differently. Like, I'm sure it's, you know, you're super proud of, of your children. But at the same time, it's got to be weird that you know them as very specific people that you raised and are, you know, people yeah. first. But then you can read an article about, oh, Lucas Hedges is so good. And they're just talking about him as an actor. And you're like, I, that's not the person I know. Like, sure, he does that. In fact, I've directed him. But it's not the person I know. It's, it's a weird mindfuck of just, Okay, so people will see the same person I'm looking at have a completely different understanding of them or perception of them, and and especially with movies, people approach movies that way. Everyone watches the movie differently. It's the parent-teacher conference moment when you oh, go yeah. to school and you think your kid's suffering in school. This happened with our older son, and we got to school and the teachers were all like, "He's delightful. He's the most outgoing kid." And but he comes at this is when he was young. He comes yeah. home, he's unhappy, and 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 it was like night and day yeah it's always it, that that one's always a fun discovery where you're like oh you're different here like that because that's the thing where character growing up this dates me was a character named eddie haskell on the show leave it to beaver <laughs> his ass friend who the parent was really sweet to the parents and the minute yeah. the parents left he became a different person so oh, we all we all had that friend growing up also yes you know, it was like eventually your parents figured out like they're fine but they're troublemakers but around them what me worry i'm not in trouble that's that's like what the dog does the dog is always like i didn't do it you know i'm good you like me uh it's it's that's what makes the the movie i think it sounds like a um 
a small price to be like bearable. But I think it is true that like you're dealing with such strong emotions that it wouldn't be bearable if it wasn't for, I think, the, the amount that you like people. Like you, you like people. And I think mm -hmm. that's clear throughout your movies, even even the troubled ones. There, there's no one beyond redemption. I think even even here, even the 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 Trumpy brothers, you know, yeah. who are the closest thing to like I don't want to hear from them, are never like fully seen. They're seen as like dopey brothers as much as anything else, because you're watching it as a sibling rivalry, as much as um, you know. We're adding the like, oh god, I remember how terrifying that was. Please don't let them win. You know that the movie lets you do some of the work for you as opposed to stopping to tell that story it's true i will say uh in i think john gallagher jr and joshua leonard who play the brothers that I, I think i would admit those roles are a bit uh, a wee bit underwritten but as i study as i get to rewatch the film i'm struck by and you know i've in, in notes to each of them i've written you know thank you for yeah. you know filling in places that maybe i didn't fill in but one thing you can really feel in both of them is they these are two guys who really love their mom yeah. and, um, you know, and, and, and so, so a lot of how they behave in their scene is understood as they feel threatened. They feel threatened by their smarter, more successful brother, you know. And I would argue it even, it even um, functions more successfully than maybe you think, because sure, you don't get a lot of their side, but I think you're meant to and maybe i'm just doing the work for you but i think you're meant to be like this is a conversation they've had for about four years now like everything has been covered already so no one really you know like the the brother who's the angriest maybe feels the need to like explain his side more but the other three are like we've had this conversation already like it's we're not, happy never to have it you know that i'll tell you that's a scene i'm very proud of um we were filming and mostly we would film a scene a day in some instances we had to shoot two scenes in a day based on the actor's availability but that scene the night before we decided we filmed the sandra o family scene yeah. the, and then that night we were rehearsing what was essentially a 17 page scene for the next day yeah and um, we're rehearsing it and we're reading it and everybody's, you know, in their respective homes and we're just reading through it. And I realized the scene's not ready. And there, these are great actors. I mean, John and Allison, John Gallagher Jr. and Allison Pill were in Pieces of April with me. Allison's, this is her third film with me. I, you know, Judith Lights. And, I mean, the, the cast was amazing, but the scene wasn't. And I froze. And I, I've had this on every film I've made where you have, get to a scene and you go like, this isn't working. We have to film it. On a traditional film, you kind of have to power through because <laughs> of the cost and the, you know, it, you got a hundred. Someone, someone's tapping their watch next to you. You're like, okay, I got but it. But on this one, I froze and I, I couldn't see a solution. And I and I, I really was, I'm paralyzed. And um, it was suggested by Judith Light, you know, what if we... <laughs> what if we don't film it tomorrow? What if we rehearse? And she said, I could come back some other day. And all the other actors were like, yeah, I could come back. And one person, John said, I'm going away for a week, but I could film it when I come back. Yeah. And so we, we spent the next day rehearsing. I rewrote the entire scene. I, I mean, I could honestly cry telling the story because it seems like, well, obviously like, that's what you do. Sure. They didn't need to do this huh. and they did it. And, and then we came back, you know, 10 days later after we'd finished shooting the movie and we just shot that scene and it made all the difference and it it was a great example of <laughs> artists um you know really rescue rescue their director and and that you know it was it was really made me keep wanting to make films with with artists like these who yeah were just so generous and um, willing to do what it takes, you know. Well, really. what, a, what an amazing note to go out on, because please do keep making movies, first of all. Let's get that one out of the way. But it is, you know, providing the actors with the material, or even in this case, if if you don't feel the scene, just the space to be like, I can do this in a way that I'm not getting to otherwise is a is a service. You know, there isn't, you know, these movies are getting harder and harder to make when they're at this scale. So it's not, okay, they're not expensive, so it's easy to make them. It's, they're not expensive, which means they won't make as much, which means they're harder to make. So having someone willing to do it, you know, is a 
is a huge deal. I mean, think about it. You've you've written films that you didn't direct that went on to do very well, but would be struggles to get made now. So that's yeah, no, but it's a it's a it's a new world, you know, it's always changing. And uh, you know, I do want to say, Joey, that you know, people like you who really love film and support film, um it's it's you know people like me who are trying to make them and and trying to help others make films and encourage them to you know the the new voices that are coming to say don't yeah. lose faith we need your stories it's really um it's not nothing to know there are people out like like you out there who really love film and you know i look that doesn't mean you're going to love every film and it, no. you know, i understand that and that's with respect i you know, not every film should be loved. Not everything I make should be loved. I get it, but but I do want to thank you for um, you know, I, I follow you, I read you, I know what you're doing and right what, you're, what you're liking, and um, and it's good to know you're out there. So. I I aim to please, and it's good to know you're out there. So thank you so much for doing this, and congrats, and hopefully we can do it again before uh, several years go by again. Yes, that would be awesome. Thank you. My pleasure. Really fun to see you. Likewise. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Joey.